In this lesson, you are going to learn about phase diagrams, heating and cooling curves, and the difference between temperature and heat. So to start with, we have phase diagrams. This is a phase diagram. It's a phase diagram of water. Notice that the axes are pressure and temperature. We draw our lines up along these lines. Both phases exist at an equilibrium. We have the solid phase, the liquid phase, and the gas phase. Known for water, ice, liquid, water, and water vapor, steam. In the center, we have a triple point. Okay? And we also have a critical point. Pressure is in atmospheres, ATM. Temperature is in degrees Celsius. So for water, we have a melting point, which is also the same as a freezing point, because you melt and freeze at the same temperature, of zero degrees Celsius. A boiling point, which is equal to a condensing point, at 100 degrees Celsius. Your phase diagram here shows the varying pressures and temperatures at what state they can exist. So at a pressure of one atmosphere in zero degrees Celsius, we have the transition between ice and water, and that is the existence of a solid and a liquid. So what state or phase the substance is in? The triple point is where the temperature and pressure condition allow all three states to exist at once. That's right here. This means that we can have solids, liquids, and gases all existing in equilibrium at the same point. Then we have the critical point. This is the point up here. This is where temperature and pressure greater than this point, so anything more to the right and more above this point, do not allow water to exist as a liquid. So it must be a gas after that point. For every substance, a phase diagram is different. They'll have different lines in different locations. And then you should be able to locate the phase at any given pressure and temperature and or give the melting point or boiling point at any phase or temperature. So I could ask you one of those questions on your test or in a worksheet. Next we have heating and cooling curves. A heating curve is a graph that shows phase changes as a substance is heated. So we have temperature versus time in our given substance. We start down at the bottom. We have a slanted line where it shows that the time is increasing as is the temperature. Then a flat line which shows that the temperature is no longer increasing or decreasing but that the time is going long. At this point is where phase change occurs. Then again, their phase has changed, and we move up in temperature and time. And then we hit another phase changing time. Here, because we're going from a liquid to a gas, so water to steam, it's now boiling at the temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, which is constant, and just the time changes. And then it starts to increase again from water and steam, which exists at the flat line, up to steam, and it stays as steam. After the heating and cooling curve, we have the cooling curve. So after our heating curve, we have the cooling curve. Our cooling curve is a graph that shows the phase changes as the substance is cooled. So just the opposite of the heating curve. A heating curve goes up, a cooling curve comes down. So again, we have temperature and time. The temperature, we're starting at a high temperature down to low. We're starting again at zero seconds and moving along. Temperature, we start as a gas, so a very high temperature, and it starts as a gas. It drops down, then we hit our line, our flat line, plateau, tells us that we have a phase change. Here it's changing from a gas to a liquid, so all along this line, there's an equilibrium established between gases and liquids. And here it condenses. Then my temperature decreases, it stays as a liquid as it decreases, and then hits the next point. Here we have an equilibrium between liquid and solid, and it starts to freeze. So the freezing action occurs the equilibrium in states, and it's at one constant temperature, and then it decreases again. Notice that when you go through a phase change, the temperature is constant, but you are adding or losing heat, not temperature. So with that being said, what is the difference between temperature and heat? Temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy of atoms or molecules. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. We can have absolute zero. This is the energy of molecular motion when the energy of molecular motion actually comes to a stop. 
So he said that all molecules have stopped moving. We can measure temperature by Fahrenheit, Celsius, or Kelvin. Given the example of water of a boiling point, melting point, or absolute zero, for Fahrenheit, water boils at 212 degrees, it melts or freezes at 32 degrees, and absolute zero is at negative 459 degrees. Zero or degrees Celsius, the boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. The melting or freezing point is at zero degrees Celsius, and absolute zero is negative 273 Celsius. For Kelvin, K-E-L-V-I-N, we abbreviate as just a K, there's no degree sign. Boiling point of water is 373 Kelvin. Melting point is 273 Kelvin. And then absolute zero is what our absolute zero is based on, is what the Kelvin scale is based on. And at absolute zero Kelvin is zero Kelvin. So opposite of temperature, we have heat, which is the actual energy that's stored within matter that is proportional to temperature. So it's proportional but not equal to. To change the temperature, we must increase or decrease the heat. And heat's units are measured in joules, same as energy. Heat is equal to energy. Okay. We have to instate our laws of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created or destroyed. We call this the law of conservation of energy. Much like we called that law of conservation of mass, was that mass can either be created or destroyed. The second is that heat moves from hot to cold. So for example, heat from your hand, if you're holding an ice cube, heat from your hand is going to melt the ice cube, and so the heat is going to go from your warm hand into the cold ice cube. 